Tales of the Tempest is pretty fun. I wouldn't call it underrated, but it also doesn't deserve the fervent hate that much of the fanbase seems to hold for it. For one, I wonder how many Tales fans have actually played this game. I'll bet not nearly as many as who claim it's trash online. And that's because it hasn't been released in the West. Of course, you can emulate it, which I did, but for how much hate this game gets, there's a suspicious lack of content or discussion about it online. I could only find one review on YouTube and very little forum discussion that demonstrates knowledge of the game instead of just assuming it sucks. I'm here to shed some light on this lesser known game and hopefully offer a fresh perspective that might convince you to give it a go, if you're a curious Tales fan like me. There's one caveat though, <laughs> you might have noticed the asterisk in the video title, and it's a big one. I played the fan patch, which in addition to translating the text also fixes some bugs and makes the game more playable. How much more playable, I'm not sure, but from the patch notes, it sounds like those dudes did a ton of work under the hood and just about went crazy doing it. <laughs> Since I'd bet this is the version most English speakers would play anyway, I'm okay with limiting my review to it. I'm sure the original release is every bit as janky and broken as I've heard though. If you only want to judge that version, fair enough, but I'm focusing on the absolute zero patch in this review. So with that, Look, Tales of the Tempest still ain't great, but I also don't dislike much about it. It's just short and stripped down compared to its home console siblings. It's a miniature Tales game designed for an ancient handheld and that shows. For one, you battle in three horizontal lanes with the ability to hop between them to dodge attacks or position yourself to get the upper hand. It's different from the battle systems of its 3D predecessors, but it works well and I found it fun. It puts the focus on avoiding damage, more so than in the console game since enemy attacks are brutal and has you assigning arts according to which combos you like best. Certain types of arts can be chained into others, which means you'll be changing up your arts loadout throughout the game, though not during battle, which is a shame. There's a surprising amount of variety and even a little depth here. Not as much as in something like Vesperia, no way, but more so than in, say, Legendia. You'll have to constantly manage status effects and use items for healing since the party AI is pretty bad and you can't order them to use arts. It's also pretty easy to get cornered by enemies and screwed pretty fast, so you'll need to stay on your toes. This is not a super tough game, but it ain't easy either, at least not for the first half or so. I also didn't have any problems with the art. These are 3D visuals on the Nintendo DS, which is roughly comparable to an N64. And it looks like an N64 game. I don't know what else you could reasonably expect. I've played tons of DS games and this doesn't stand out as looking bad to me, but I'll admit I'm lenient on graphical fidelity in any game. Maybe because I grew up playing N64 games. And sure, it's fair to compare Tempest to a 2D game like Radiant Historia, for example. They're JRPGs on the same console after all, but to me that's not a meaningful comparison. 2D games are always going to look better on that machine, and besides, Tempest came out only two years into the DS's life cycle. Considering that thing was a flop until the DS Lite was released, I'm willing to give this game a break on its visuals. It looks fine. Tales of the Tempest's short length works in its favor for the most part. The story suffers immensely though, it's so bland and forgettable that I couldn't tell you anything that happens in it, and I finished the game only a few weeks ago, but I was engaged with it for the most part, and once I started wishing it'd be over, it was. That goes for the combat too. Any longer and I might start complaining about how repetitive it is, but for the 11 hours I spent with the game, it didn't get old. I consistently found new combos I liked and had just enough time to master them before unlocking another. It's a shame the story is underwhelming, but I'm not a big story guy in the first place. If that's why you like Tales games though, you'll probably want to stay away from this one. So is Tales of the Tempest good? Not exactly, but when talking about my least favorite Tales games, I'd rank Legendia slightly below this one. I would actually play Tempest again, using different arts and strategies, whereas I have no desire to slog through 30 to 60 hours of Legendia's rote combat again. At least Tempest challenged me a little bit, I even died a couple times, and it's short and sweet. 
Well, kinda sweet, as I've already explained. This ain't a blanket endorsement of Tales of the Tempest by any means. I wouldn't recommend it as your first Tales game, no way, and probably not your third, fourth, or even tenth Tales game. But if you're a completionist fan like me and want to see all the series has to offer, don't be put off by Tempest. It's worth a playthrough, especially if you like Tales Combat, so give it a shot. That's all I've got for this one. Thanks for watching. Leave a like for that algorithm, subscribe for more videos on Tales and other RPGs, and have a blessed day.